Hello guys, my name is Fusion. Today I'm bringing you the first in what will hopefully be a series of guides on some of my favorite weapons in Splatoon 2 that range from top tier weapons all the way down to meme tier ones. Today we're going to talk about the Tensabrella. Not going to lie, the Tensabrella is a bit lackluster compared to any of the best weapons in the game. The Tensabrella has terrible lag after firing, it's slow to open the shield, and it doesn't do much damage at any range except point blank really. When you see one on your ranked team, you're honestly not too thrilled about it. Despite its shortcomings, its shield mechanic gives it quite a few upsides, especially when paired with teammates that you can communicate with. I'm going to discuss the main strengths and weaknesses of the weapon, talk about maps it's strong on, and give some tips to help you guys step up your gameplay. First, let's take a look at some basic stats for the Tentabrella. The Tentabrella comes equipped with beacons and bubbles, making it a solid support weapon. Its bubbles only cost 170p, tying it with the custom elators for the cheapest bubbles in the game. The Tensabrella has range similar to a range blaster, at around 3 lines in the training room, but usually only deals about 20 damage at that range. If you move a bit closer, the Tensabrella can do upwards of 70 damage, and can even kill a 1 hit at around 1.5 lines. As a Brella class weapon, damage at fixed ranges heavily depends on what part of the enemy you're aiming at, and how much of your shot hits them and most ranges you'll two-hit enemies with good shots. Releasing the shield takes up 30% of your ink tank, or 40% if you include the shot beforehand. Be careful with your ink usage, since the Tentabrella requires a lot of it. The shield deals 30 damage on impact, meaning that you can land a shot for 70 damage and try and bump the enemy with the shield to finish them off. The shield takes 6 seconds to return after you launch it. Bombs will instantly detonate on either side of the Brilla Shield, so enemies will often attempt to use that explosion to kill you. Be aware of enemies with splat, suction, or curling bomb subs, and make sure they don't catch you from behind. If you're following a launch shield, make sure you don't poke out in front of it, or you could die to bombs there as well. Because enemies will target you with bombs, you should be careful about opening your shield when a teammate's in front of you or you risk killing them. There's often enough time to open your shield when you see an incoming bomb, especially a suction bomb, so don't be afraid to stay close. You'll find that enemies will try to circle around the side of your brella as it's moving and attempt to hit your brella with a bomb or just shoot you. In order to win 1v1s, you should be forcing the enemy to stay on the opposite side of the shield from you at all times. Even though you don't do much damage at max range, that's the range you should be fighting 1v1s against close range weapons at. Try to avoid repeatedly shooting when you're near weapons like Splattershot, Enzap, or Splashomatic. Instead, after you shoot, keep holding the fire button so you can open the Brella Shield if you need to. That sounds obvious, but repeatedly firing gives the enemy enough time to rush you down, and forces you to hit a tough shot if you want to win the fight. Your goal is to always be able to open your shield in time if the enemy decides to rush you down. An important aspect of playing the Tentabrella is anticipating the enemy's movement. Your weapon fires too slowly that if you have to react to someone up in your face, it's likely already too late. Based on how the enemy approaches you, you can make a good guess of which direction they'll want to move in. They'll often pick the side of the shield they're closest to, or the one that gives the best line of sight on you and stays away from obstacles. If you try to predict the enemy's movement with a shot in that direction, you can potentially one-hit them. Knowing this, enemies might be discouraged from circling around that side and stay in front of your shield. As long as the enemy remains a fair distance in front of you, you shouldn't launch your shield. You should continue to space them out and hit them with chip damage. Simply having your shield up discourages the opponent from rushing in. If they approach or try to circle around, try to continue facing their direction with your shield up. If they stay close, you should launch the shield to use as cover. Try to stay on the opposite side of the shield from the enemy, or if it's not possible, retreat a bit to stall until your Brella returns. Something else the Tantabrella excels at are traps. The shield can't be swum through, so releasing it towards an enemy or group of enemies forces them to move. In many cases, there's only one direction for them to possibly move, like if you positioned your Brella up against a wall. You can use this opportunity to force them towards your waiting teammates or into an area that you're watching. Like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, a 70 damage shot combined with the touch of the shield is fatal, so you can sometimes hunt damaged enemies down using the shield. Tensabrella has a unique set of matchups against weapons that stands apart from every other weapon in the game. 
I'm going to go through some weapon class threats and talk about how to approach them in 1v1 situations. Splatlings and chargers thrive off of their ability to discourage approaching. With other weapons, you have no cover if you decide to approach them directly. Instead, you'd opt to space them out with a special or flank. With the Tentabrella, you have the ability to release the shield and just follow it straight towards those weapons. Chargers essentially have no way of stopping you and are forced to retreat. Be patient and stay behind your shield, and you won't get caught by a splat bomb detonating on it. Splatlings are also often forced to retreat, but they also have the ability to break your shield if they take too long to approach. If you feel you're too far away, just releasing the shield in their direction forces them to move. Blasters are a terrible matchup for both the regular Brella and Undercover, but you have a bit more leeway with the Tentabrella. Short range blasters will try and approach you much like a close range shooter, but might try to aim just above your shield to hit you with indirect damage. You can maneuver between sides of the shield to avoid this. Like with any weapon, be careful of bombs thrown into your shield. For longer range blasters like Rapid, hugging the shield makes it extremely difficult for them to damage you, and forces them to backpedal if they want to do so. Before following a launch shield at a Rapid, make sure they can't just keep backing up until your umbrella disappears. Any mid or long range shooter has trouble breaking your shield on their own. Stay out of range until you can open and release the shield, and from there you can follow it and force them back. These weapons might try and backpedal until your umbrella disappears, so if you can't engage quickly enough, just retry once your shield comes back. These weapons also might try to rush you down, so play it similarly to as if they were close range shooters. The Tentabrella shield makes for great cover when making a push but it doesn't defend you from all angles. Attacks from above are something the Tentabrella has trouble dealing with. However, thanks to your Bubble Blower special, you can use your bubbles to cover the areas that your shield can't. Toss the bubbles to block the sides you're afraid of an attack from, and at least one just behind the shield for you to hide in during the push. If you're leading a Raymaker or Power Clam, make sure they're in the cover of your shield and bubbles. Something that's easy to forget is that you're not tied to your umbrella shield. While your shield's assisting a push, you can do things like ensure the bubbles stay up or guard your teammates from behind. The shield's primarily there to keep you and your teammates alive, but it can also be used as a distraction. The enemy can't see behind your shield either, so you can sometimes surprise enemies with a one-hit kill. The umbrella shield also paints a surprising amount. Releasing shields towards unpainted territory whenever your life isn't in immediate danger is a good idea. Just make sure you can survive those next 6 seconds. Something you can really take advantage of with the Tentabrella is falloff damage. Falloff damage refers to the damage your gun deals once the enemy is beyond your effective range, like when you fire over a wall or hit someone far below you. Most weapons have a significant drop off in damage for falloff. Since the Tentabrella fires so many bits of ink, it isn't affected too much by the damage drop-off, and it can even one-hit people over walls. If you play around with this in the training room, you won't be able to one-hit KO the target dummies with fall-off damage. However, this is mostly just because of the Inkling's hitbox orientation. If your opponent is in squid form, they have a large flat hitbox on the ground, and can catch a lot more of your shot than if they were in kid form, where the hitbox is tall and thin. So, you can use the umbrella to shoot over obstacles and scout for enemies like you would with the slusher. Let's quickly talk about the modes that Tensabrella is best on. Tensabrella, at its core, is an escort weapon. It works best for moving the objective safely at its own pace, and for that reason, it's a reasonable pick on both Rainmaker and Clamplets. It's also worth noting that Rainmaker shots that go into the Tensabrella shield are destroyed. This means that the Tensabrella and a teammate can approach a Rainmaker very safely. On Splat Zones, the Brella's solid painting power and bubble special work well, but the game isn't as concentrated around key points on the map, so it's a lot harder to find a use for the shield and a lot easier to be caught unawares. You should not pick the Tentabrella on tower control. You'd think the shield would be useful on the tower, but in under two seconds of holding it up, it launches away. Not to mention that the Tentabrella has a terrible time hitting people on the tower due to the post in the middle of it. The Tentabrella's best map is probably Port Mackerel. Releasing the Brella on any one of the lanes blocks it completely, and it can really enable your team to push. 
I'd recommend trying to push from the right side on Rainmaker, since it has a straight path towards the pedestal. Watch out for Sting right here, since it goes through your shield. Schellendorf is another great map for the Tentabrilla. On Rainmaker and Clams, you can use the shield to push with a teammate across the rooftop to get close to weapons like Splatlings and Jet Squelcher, which would otherwise be camping there. The Brilla Shield is useful on just about any map with the choke point. This would be places like the bridge on Camp Triggerfish, or the elbow to get into the base on the right on Humpback. Just releasing the shield into a choke point gives your team cover to push behind, which aggressive weapons like Dooley's or Splattershot can use effectively. There are a few good maps for the Tentabrilla, but I'd seriously avoid maps where you need to push upwards to reach the enemy. That would be stages like Moray Towers and Gobi Arena. You're looking for maps where the Brilla Shield gives you cover from most angles, so it struggles on maps where the enemy can shoot down on you. For gear, I think it's important to prioritize staying alive, so you can keep farming bubbles, placing beacons, and releasing Brella shields to force the enemy team back. Object Shredder is a must with any Brella. It lets you break armor with even weak shots, destroy ballers in only a few hits, and shreds the Rainmaker shield. Special Power Up is a solid addition to any kit with bubbles. Larger bubbles make it more difficult for the enemy team to destroy them, which can give you longer periods of cover during a push. Without abilities, the Tentabrella can only fire 10 shots in a single ink tank. Ink Saver Main can help you stay up and delays the need to refill ink. The Brella has almost no mobility after you shoot, so Run Speed Up can help you strafe and stay alive. It's by no means mandatory, but it's still pretty useful in 1v1 situations. And that about does it for this guide. Overall, the Tentabrella is a situational but severely underrated weapon. If you guys have any questions, or suggestions for another weapon guide, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.